Good day viewers, I'm Francis Adeshola. Glad to have you join us in today's broadcast, Church Without Borders. In this edition, God is set to bless and give you divine turnaround in your life and vocation. Please stay tuned. Good evening viewers. Once again, you are welcome to another session of the broadcast, Church Without Borders. I want to thank as many of our uh, us that have been following this um, broadcast from different parts of the world and thank you for your comments and of course I want to encourage you to invite your families to invite your friends to like our page to be connected to our family CINM. You are going to see so many of the videos and um, the past broadcast. So in this session, um, we'll be talking again on Church Without Borders. But like I said, that is the overall focus of this broadcast. And this broadcast is divided to three parts. The first is to synthesize the church which I call one fold, that the church of Jesus Christ one fold. Then after that, we go to the second session, which can be said to be the message for the day. Then the last session is the time of prayers, the time of prayers that will bring blessings and miracles into your lives. Now, before I go on, I want us to bow down our heads, wherever you are, let's just pray together. Father, we thank you for another opportunity to come to hear your word and to share your word to these wonderful viewers around the world. I pray that your word will bring blessings to every life. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Now, last week I was talking about biblical worldview. That is, one of the things that is causing problem in the body of Christ is because the church, the Christians, they lack biblical worldview. The problems we have is that we judge issues around us based on the worldview perspective. Now, I explained that a worldview is a set of assumptions held consciously or unconsciously in faith about the basic makeup of the world and how it works. That is what worldview is. And we said there are so many influences that come or bring about our worldview. We have talked about the family background, the education, the media, the abuse somebody has suffered in the past. For example, somebody who has suffered uh, abuse in the hands of uh, a man, maybe a lady, now to trust men becomes difficult. There are ladies that have suffered abuse even in the hands of their parents, and their, I mean their fathers. Now for such people to trust men or to rely on men, it becomes impossible, I mean difficult. But by the time such a person even becomes a Christian, a child of God, he will still be struggling with this worldview, this mindset, which has become his or her worldview. Violence. When somebody has suffered violence, and um, he, has, he, has, he has suffered in the hands of men. And of course, such a person thing can shape on his uh, thinking. <clears throat> so, and as a result, begin to have a wrong perspective about the world. What of arts, social influences, uh, social influences, culture of nation has also shaped the line of thoughts of people and has become a worldview. They are, they are, I mean, the worldview unto them. And we have said that because human being, we are spirit being, we operate from inner man before we uh, begin to manifest in the outward. And because of the state of our mind, now define what our world view, that is the values we exhibit, is the outcome of our world view. 
the values you exhibit, the way you see things, the way you handle things, now define what your worldview, you know, or perspective about life is. And of course, because your values, when you extend that, it becomes your mindset or your emotions. Begin to be the emotions you display. And as a result, leads to your decisions. Decision you make, and your decision now becomes the behavior that everybody is going to see outside there. That everybody look at you and said, why are you like this? Why are you still difficult? Why do you find it difficult to believe in people, to trust people? And you know, all these things have affected so many people in different ways. It has affected so many marriages because so many ladies, because of what they have suffered in the hands of men, even after they got married, they find it difficult to trust the man completely and, uh, and, and so on and so forth. But we are saying that God, if you are a child of God, you are expected to exhibit biblical worldview. Biblical worldview. And uh, the scripture uh, also uh, quoted last week. Let me just read that. Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1 from verse 19 to 20. It says, For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself by him. I say whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. What we are saying is that through the blood of Jesus Christ, everything has been reconciled back to God. Everything has been reconciled back to God. Now, if the blood of Jesus Christ is involved in the life of a person, that person is reconciled to God. And you see, you say everything, it's not even talking about, you know, human being alone, but everything that you see in the world. God is interested in everything either living or non-living. Everything. Talk about plants, talk about animals, talk about trees, talk about uh, creatures. They are all, every creature. Everything <clears throat> has been reconciled through the blood of Jesus, in other words. Now, everything that God has put in place, we can begin to see the best, the intention whereby God has put it in place instead of looking at it from the wrong perspective. So, if you are now a child of God, you're a Christian, which is our emphasis, you discover that you need to agree with the position of the scriptures. Now, this position of the scriptures is what brings about a biblical worldview. The biblical worldview. You see, we said the biblical worldview, the basis of the biblical worldview is God's revelation in the scriptures. The revelation of God in the scriptures is the basis of the biblical worldview. It teaches us that everything that exists came into being at God's command. And it is therefore subject to him, finding his purpose and meaning in him. Everything finds its purpose and meaning in the Lord Jesus Christ. So when you begin to see things in that light, that God is interested in everything, and you begin to look at the revelation of God concerning that thing. And that is what's supposed to form the, the, the biblical worldview that God expects every Christian to have. If we begin to shape our worldview based on the revelation of the scriptures, I tell you, we'll be able to live a fantastic Christian life. Now, very quickly, there are elements of non-biblical worldview. For those people who are not seeing things in the height of the scripture, what are the elements? Now, one example, for example, is male superiority. Now, you see some people today, even after they are born again, they still believe that male is superior to, a, a man is superior to a woman. And so, because of that, the woman is to take the second fidus, the second position. But they have forgotten that in Christ Jesus, there is no male, there is no female. Everyone, either male or female, we are one in Christ Jesus. So the male superiority does not hold if somebody is to uh, 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 be concerned or be, in, I mean, use the biblical worldview to look at things. Now, some people believe that work, number two, is work is cause. Some people feel that, well, if Adam has not seen, we would have not been laboring and be working today. But that is not the truth because when God put Adam in that garden, he told Adam specifically that he should till the ground. 
he should till the ground. So work has always been part of man, right from the time of creation. So you see, with Christian today, so why is he say you say he's a Christian? Why is he behaving this way? Why is he behaving that way? It's because he has not aligned himself, you know, or herself to the Bible standard of the way. God wants us to look at things. So I'm encouraging you to be a Christian, a true Christian, a Christian that is universal, a Christian that is not tribalistic, tribal, uh, tribalistic, a Christian that is not a denominational uh, 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 bigot, but a Christian that believe in the standards of the And with that, you'll be able to relate with Christians around the world. Um, I pray the Lord will bless uh, us with this that we have listened to. I will be with you shortly after this musical timeout. back to church without borders and i hope you enjoy that uh, musical interlude in this session i'll be sharing with you on a message titled the victorious church the victorious church and i read from isaiah chapter 40 isaiah chapter 40 just two verses there verses 9 and 10 it says, O Zion that bringeth good tidings, get thee up into the high mountain. O Jerusalem that bringeth good tidings, lift up thy voice with strength. Lift it up, be not afraid. Say unto the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Behold, the Lord God will come with strong hand, and his arm shall rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him him now people of god the lord through the death and the resurrection of jesus christ has raised a body of people called the church and these people called the church they are not just willers they are not weaklings they are not misfortune people if you are a member of the church of Jesus Christ through redemption you are not a disadvantage you are not a victim but you are a victim You need to see yourself in the light of the scriptures. So Jesus Christ has come to raise a crop of people called the church. And of course, they are the victorious church. So if those who are born again, we are victorious in Christ Jesus. Because Jesus Christ has given us the victory. Even right from the Old Testament, from the prophecy of Isaiah, he said, O Zion that bring good, get good, good tidings, get thee up to the high mountain. O Jerusalem that bring good tidings, lift up your voice with strength. Lift it up, be not afraid. Say unto the cities of Judah, Behold your God. 
I want to tell you because you are part of the church of Jesus Christ, your God will make himself known. The God will reveal himself in your circumstance or in any situation you are passing through. By means of introduction, we all have responsibility as believers to make the church of God what God intends it to be on earth. We are to make the church of God what God intends it to be on the surface of the earth. We are expected to be a voice crying in the wilderness. The victorious church is supposed to be a church crying in the wilderness. A church crying in the wilderness. In the book of John chapter 1 verse 23. This is the prophecy on, uh, concerning John. John the Baptist. He said, John was the one speaking here. He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight, you know, the way of the Lord. That's why he says, the Zion who bring good tidings. We are the Zionists. We are the children of the living God. He said, get thee all to the high mountain. O Jerusalem, we are the spiritual Jews, the spiritual Israelites, that bring good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength. Lift it up, be not afraid. Say unto the cities of Judah, behold your God. Now, the Lord is expecting the church the victorious believer, the victorious church, to make God known in our generation. To make God known in our dispensation. That is the intention of Jesus Christ, you know, concerning uh, the church of Jesus Christ. Now, I'm um, concerning the church. If you look at the book of Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 10, now, the Bible talks about uh, that, that for we resonate against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places. That's why it says that, he said you should stand having your loins guard with righteousness. Now, he said we are to stand. The church is to stand. Why? Because the church has a backing. The church has a support. The church is representing Christ on the surface of the earth. The church is the carrier of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is in us. And that's why if you look at the Acts of the Apostles, why is it called the Acts of the Apostles? We can call it the Acts of the Believers or the Acts of the Church. The church then, you see their Acts, their manifestation from one place to the other, from in one situation to the other, manifesting the power of Christ. Manifesting power of Christ, raising the, 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 the dead back to life, you know, healing the sick, delivering the oppressed. This is the church of Jesus Christ, what the church is expected to be on the surface of the earth. So, people of God, if you are a Christian, I want to congratulate you. If you are not born again, you must come to join this chariot of winners, the chariot of victorious people. This chariot of people that are not victims, but they are victors. Now, as a church of Jesus, what are the things that we, the Lord expects from us? What are the things that are expected from us as the church of Jesus Christ? But before then, let's quickly look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Verse 20, I raised. Say, now then we are ambassadors for Christ. We are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. Now, we are ambassadors. The victorious church is a representative of Christ, is an ambassador. Is the one, I mean, he has all the rights and the privileges of the heavenlies. Just like an ambassador of a nation in another country is given all the rights and the privileges that the president of that nation, if is to be around, if is to be in that country, 
is I mean, is given that right and privileges. The same thing as ambassadors of Christ, we are representing Christ on the surface of the earth. And so, we have right to all the privileges of the heavenlies. Heaven is our headquarter. Heaven is our headquarter. We are representing heaven here. Now, as ambassador of Christ, whatever you are doing, whether you are into business, whether you are into politics, whether you are an educationist, whether you are into commerce or you are an entrepreneur, whatever you are doing as a student, anywhere you find yourself, you are expected to be Christ ambassadors. You are representing Christ in that place. That is why you must take charge of that territory for the Lord Jesus Christ. You must determine what happens there. You must put your feet to the ground whenever the devil wants to raise his ugly head because we are the ambassadors of Christ. And that's why he said we are to reconcile, you know, people back to God. We reconcile everything to God. If we talk about corruption, if we talk about wickedness today, if we talk about darkness, you know, in, 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 uh, in spheres, in society, as the member of the church of Jesus Christ, as part of this victorious church, you are to bring transformation, you are to bring solution into that environment. Quickly, the church, number one, is to be Christ ambassador on heart. Number two, the church is the salt of the hearth. In Matthew chapter 5, Jesus Christ said, they said, we are the salt of the earth. But when the salt lost its savor, and that is its sweetness, how can it make things sweet? So, we must not lose our sweetness as part of this victorious army that we are talking about called the church of Jesus Christ. Now, number three, the church is the light of the world, leading the pathway for people to follow. You see all this in that Matthew chapter 5, we are the light of the world, leading the pathway for others to follow leading the path for everyone to follow and lastly we are to put satan demons and their cohorts to check this is the power of the church in psalm 110 verse 2 he said the lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of zion rule thou in the midst of their enemies the church is to rule in the midst of the enemies the church is to rule in the midst of the enemies. After this short time out, I'll come and conclude, you know, with prayers based on that scripture. You are welcome back after that music. Salute. Now, the last session of this broadcast is to pray. And of course, the scripture I want you to go away with or to pray with is that Psalm 110 verse 2. He said, The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion, rule thou in the midst of thy enemies. Now, the victorious church does not, does not run for battle. You don't, they don't run for problems. They don't run for challenges. They don't run for persecution, but they are to rule in the midst 
of the enemies. That is where God has stationed you. There could be enemy left and right. No wonder the Bible says, thousand shall fall by your side, ten thousand by right hand, it shall not come near you. We are to rule in the midst of the enemies. And therefore, I pray for you. And I want you to pray along with me. I pray that the Almighty God I ask that the grace will supply into your life. I ask that the Lord will strengthen you, that you be renewed. So the Lord shall send the rod of his strength out of Zion. The Lord, the strength of the Lord, the grace of the Lord, the support from above, be released upon your life. And I say from this moment, begin to rule in the midst of the enemy. All the powers that are opposing your life, that are opposing your destiny, I command them to be crushed in the name of Jesus. You are a victor. You are to shine. The darkness cannot overcome you. You are to shine and be a light even for those in darkness. I release the grace of God upon your life. By this broadcast, I pray that you will give testimony in the name of Jesus. If you are sick, receive your healing. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. I believe you are blessed today's broadcast church without borders join us in subsequent edition go out there and make impact in your world god bless you